Thank you, Chappelle. The only one that's apparent, again, 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 like with the attitude over here. Yes! Yeah, I'm gonna stop asking you questions. I'm just gonna do. All right, that's what my ex-girlfriend, Never mind. we're not gonna get into her. I don't know, she was weird. She got, all right. I just have to get this off my chest before I bring this guy out, because like, this really fucked with me, y'all. My ex-girlfriend got mad at me one time. Like, all right, I have sleep apnea. I don't know if anyone knows what that is, but I have sleep apnea, which means I gotta wear a mask at, when I sleep, right? Yo, so my ex-girlfriend, she wanted to do this cute thing where she wanted to wake me up with a good morning kiss. And so I'm asleep, right? And there I am, and she just like leans over. She takes that mask off. She leans over, and the minute her lips touch mine, it was just like... <laughs> I sucked all the fucking air out of her, you guys. And she got mad at me. She always told me she wanted me to do more things that took her breath away. But I'm the asshole. Does it still surprise you that I'm single? It should. It should. All right, you guys ready to finish this show strong? Yeah. Yeah, I love how the comedians are the most enthusiastic ones. Let's do it, you guys. Here we go. Give a big round of applause for your last comedian, your headliner, Christopher Anthony. I am, uh, I'm growing out a beard. I'm growing out a beard, uh, not because I want to look older, but because I want to look dramatically younger. The day after I shave it. I have been spending the last three and a half months trying to tap into a single moment. You guys are right for the camera, by the way. Um, ladies, do the same. Look. Stop shaving now. Just all of it. Let hair go, let hair grow. And in four months, when he has almost packed up the rest of his things, shave it all, and he'll be like, my God, this majestic beauty standing before me. And then you break up with him, is how it works. Um, I actually put like a whole little seminar together. This is my little TED talk about relationships. I broke it down into scouting, Dating, having a relationship, and sex, okay? Scouting. Dating is when you turn off the TV, you get off the couch, you get dressed, and you go out long enough to find someone who's comfortable coming back to your house, getting undressed, and watching TV with you. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's full, full circle. All right, Netflix and chill. And a lot of people like to go online for dating because they don't like the idea of someone lying to their face, you know? If you're not the best looking person, get into graphic design, pay for Photoshop. It'll help out a lot. Now I want to pass off this suggestion to you. Um, the first time I met a girl, I wanted to meet at the food court of the mall because she needs witness witnesses to feel comfortable eating next to me and nothing at the food court costs more than $12. So it's a win-win. <laughs> Plenty of eyes, don't worry. No one's, no one's in danger, including my wallet. But I had a very strange request. I don't really trust all the photos, right? It's like, all your little profile photos, is that really you? <laughs> no, no. Might as well be a baby photo, it was so long ago. So I said, look, before we meet up, could you do me a favor? Could you take a picture holding today's newspaper? Like, right, I just need to see the headline, I know what's going on currently. I just want to make sure that's you. You guys are being quiet because like, that is useful. I appreciate that. That's, a, that's also a good tip. Now, I am strikingly gorgeous, but dating is a challenge for me because of three things that are pretty much beyond my control. I'm very short, okay? Um, I've never been known to drive like a very nice car, and I don't drink. So let's review. <laughs> a lot of girls like really tall guys, and I, I do not get the obsession with tall men. It's just like, well, he's verbally abusive, I'm pretty sure he's stealing from my purse, but I have all this underutilized shelving and now I can decorate, it's really nice. He just, he grabs things and when we hold hands, it's like walking through the park with my dad. I have daddy issues, it's what I'm saying, he's 6'2", 
to. His eyes are gorgeous. He has nothing to do with either of those things, I'm sure, with dark brown eyes. Am I bitter? Maybe. <laughs> I've never been known to drive a nice car. For a long time, I had a 1995 Volvo 850, okay? I called her Stacy. She was my boo. We were together for seven years. Now, women love to date guys with new cars, but I have a helpful tip. Ladies, he had an older car, okay? It started to make noises that he didn't want to deal with. So he thought to himself, I can fix what I know is broken, or I can get rid of that and get something younger, smaller, and prettier that I'm more comfortable bringing to my high school reunion. And you're dating that guy, so be careful. My car is 11 years old. Just hit me up later. All about loyalty. Now, the whole, the whole drinking thing, okay, I don't drink. And when I tell people I don't drink, they always assume that there's a story, right? Like either me or my mom or my dad had some horrible drinking problem. And I'm sorry to disappoint, but there's no story, okay? I just don't like the taste of alcohol. I also don't eat mayonnaise. But that's because my dad used to beat the fuck out of me with a mayonnaise jar. <laughs> Alcohol is taste, but mayonnaise is the trauma, for sure. But when my friends go out, they're never like, hey, we're gonna go to some places that serve mayonnaise. Are you gonna be cool with that? Or, I'm gonna have some mayonnaise tonight. I'm not gonna go crazy like last week. I love when people walk in, like last night, like, why is this guy having a thing about mayonnaise? Anyway, so um, I'm from South Florida. I moved here a few years ago, but South Florida is infamous for you know teachers having sex with their students, strip clubs, and uh, and, and cocaine. <laughs> right, Kevin? All right, there we go. Um, so I like to go to nightclubs to meet women because I think that there's no better preparation for marriage than yelling at each other at two o'clock in the morning over loud music. It really sets the tone. You're like, I think we're gonna do this for a decade. What are you, huh? You're both trying to convince the other that you haven't had as much to drink as you know you have. I'm not drunk, you're drunk, stop it. I work hard. Anyway, so I'm at a nightclub and I'm talking to this woman. Remember, I don't drink, that's the third thing against me. So I'm chatting with her and the conversation is, was going well. And then she's like, so what are you drinking? And I'm like, actually, uh, it's just Sprite. Oh, Sprite and what? And like, there's. There's nothing in my drink except for Sprite. Now you would have sworn she was concerned that I put something in her drink because immediately I was a predator. She's like, well, in her mind, she's like, you are not nearly as susceptible and you're not gonna make a bunch of bad decisions that you can scapegoat something about. Anyway, getting philosophical here, but this actually happened, right? Anyway, so she doesn't believe that I just don't drink. This actually happened. I'm like, I'm trying to explain. I'm like, actually, I don't drink. I mean, on a few occasions here and there, but I don't really buy drinks. It's a celebratory. She goes, Ch -ch 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 -ch, and she puts her finger over my lip like this. She goes, she says, um, I just, I can't be with another man with a drinking problem because I have made promises to my friends and my family and people who care for me. And I don't care how cute you are, I can't do that to them. And she walks away, and all I'm sitting there thinking is, you thought I was cute? Thank you. Go me. Now, here's another thing that like really, really throws me off. When I'm on a date, or even I'm just chatting, and like less than five minutes have passed, and she's like, what sign are you? Can I get a show of hands? Anybody who does not like that question, what sign are you? Okay, all astronomers, astrology fans over here, people who are only here because their astrology said to go up to a rooftop tonight. All right, anyway, um, the reason why I have a huge issue is because if we're talking and I'm like, oh, Gemini, she is not thinking about me anymore. She is thinking about every Gemini she has ever dated or interacted with, and she's just like, I don't trust that month. I know you have nothing to do with it, but conversation ends here. I dated a Gemini. 
Sorry. So I'm just like, what's I? Uh, I'm I'm. Uh, let's keep talking about something else. It's good. It's just a luck of the draw at that point. There was another time I was at a nightclub, and I was just being very polite. I wasn't even flirting. I was just talking, and the woman showed her left hand to me like a crucifix to a vampire. Like, be gone, foul demon, I am betrothed. And I gotta tell you, when I see an engagement ring, all I'm thinking is, someone put a deposit on the house, but we still show it to prospective buyers. It's like, I get that someone has invested, but until the ring switches, <laughs> your personality does. Anyway, um, we're gonna move along. Now, the actual date, okay? Now, I'm a gentleman. Whenever I'm on a date, I'm old school. I always walk closer to the street than the lady I'm with. And I do that because if, God forbid, some vehicle veers off the road, she'll cushion my fall. You know what I mean? This is... Thank you. It's good there. Um, I'm going to try this tactic with you. And you guys, go ahead and take it at home if you are. There's a lot of couples here, so maybe not. This actually happened as well. I'm on a date, I order a virgin pina colada, she gets the regular. Date is not going that well. I come up with a bright idea, take this, try it at home, or out and about. Uh, we order drinks, drinks home with cherries, cherries come with stems, right? And I said, all right, I bet you 20 bucks that you cannot tie that cherry stem in a knot just with your tongue. Now I lost $20 but I gained 15 minutes of silence. It's pretty incredible. I, uh, definitely worth it. Paid for the rest of the dinner. Now, the trouble with dating now is this whole phenomenon of ghosting, right? Ghosting has become so common. I, I live in New Orleans, it's a haunted city. But people ask me, do you believe in ghosts? And my response is, no, I'm sure she's just busy with work. <laughs> She has a really emotionally needy dog. I'm sure she'll get back to me. But I want to come up with a show called Ghost Hunters. We don't look for supernatural beings. We just go to local bars trying to find out why Stacy hasn't called John back in four days. I think it's going to be a really popular show. We use high, high end technology where we just expose the ghost uh, by opening their text messaging app to show that they read the message and just didn't respond. <laughs> And much like a seance, you're like, it looked like you were trying to reach out, I saw some dots, but then nothing, what happened? Ridiculous. So I came up with this ingenious idea, on a date, um, going old school, have a nice little picnic, right? We're out and about, open air, it's really great. I get this bold idea at the end to carve our names into a tree, and I thought that she would find that very romantic. I spelled her name correctly. I made sure she saw. So while I thought she'd be impressed with me preserving that moment, she walked away haunted. But I happened to carry a knife with me. Like what? She's like, why does he have a blade? That's con okay, we're moving. Relationships. Relationships get really ridiculous because you end up arguing over the most ridiculous things. Uh, I know I do. Like for instance, I was dating a girl, it had gone really well. We were months into the relationship. And I finally went ahead and said, hey, I love you. And she goes, I love you more. And I was just like, why do you have to be so competitive all the time? It's ridiculous. Relationship ended shortly after. And then in relationships, this also happens, right? You wanna have that conversation. You don't, but you do. The conversation about previous lovers. Right? So I came up with this bold idea. I was like, all right, I'll go ahead and I'll initiate that conversation. So I said, baby, let's both talk about how many men we've slept with in the past. <laughs> I'm gonna go first. Zero. I never experimented, I'm sorry. I know, I know. Uh, all right, you? Double digits, triple digits, we'll move along. Oh, you're leaving. Okay, you're taking, all right. I love you more. <laughs> I love you. Okay, bye. Right. Um, another girl I was dating, uh, she grew up watching tons of Disney movies. 
and she actually said to me that she wanted to be treated like a Disney princess. And I was just like, I don't know who you think I am or what I'm capable of, but I don't love you enough to kill both of your parents. Like, it's not, I've seen those movies, I know how it starts. And then we got into this weird conversation because you know like all the animated movies are turning into live action films, right? Uh, so I felt like she like really baited me into this. She's like, well what Disney princess do you think is the hottest? And I said, well, the human version of Ariel. She's like, why? I'm like, who doesn't love a woman who can't argue with you? It's incredible. I studied. She can't talk! Okay. Thank you. I was with a girl who accused me of smothering her. I get, I get it, like sometimes in relationships you get too close to comfort, but it was a really small pillow. Like, I guess she's asthmatic or something. Maybe she tried telling me, I'm not sure. See, I, I get into these ridiculous arguments, like a girl accused me of gaslighting her, and I responded by saying, that's not even a real term. I'm gonna stop making stuff up. It's getting ridiculous. <laughs> Thank you. My ex drives for Uber, which I think is good because um, she loved taking strangers home. So <laughs> she gets paid for it now. <laughs> it's their home, not ours. Uh, and she loves Airbnb, right? Because she can sleep with a different guy every week and only has to remember one address, it's good. It's queen, no, it's very comfortable. I've been there before. I mean, I've dropped somebody off there. I mean, let's go drink. Now, we get into like the sex stuff, right? Uh, public service announcement, okay? Ladies, you guys do this thing during sex. You think it's like really intense and hot and kinky. It's a little bit disturbing. We're having sex and you're like deeper, deeper. And I'm like, it's a dick, not the Star Wars franchise. It's not like, oh, you thought you saw all the dick. There's a tattoo halfway down my dick that says, to be continued. No one ever notices it before. But I would never, ever be having sex with a girl and just be like, shallower, shallower. I want to hit a wall. Does it ever end? I would never say that. And it doesn't get any more shallow when you meet on Tinder. I mean, it's just photos. <laughs> just photos. You're pretty, I'm pretty, with me. But you start to do things to sort of liven up the sex life. So, I'm guilty. We tried being risque. We tried being a little bit rowdy. But my girlfriend said that the only way she'll ever give me roadhead again is if I drive. So. <laughs> And it's weird because like, I saw this commercial, it was like, I mean pretty bold, right, on regular television, and they were saying that 62% of men suffer from premature ejaculation. Premature ejaculation, 62% of men. First and foremost, where are they getting this statistic? Can you imagine like, you're having sex like, yes, yes, oh, oh. Bedroom door open to like, how often does this occur? How often do you guys have sex? Okay, okay. No, 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 I'll just, let me just listen to her answer. Yours is obviously a lie. Also, while I'm here, how happy are you with your car insurance? I just, uh, so many statistics to get together. Just trying to multitask, you know? I, I, and the thing is like, ladies, in our defense, okay, we grow up, with a very limited window of opportunity for privacy. We have conditioned ourselves to be able to perform and finish in a very short amount of time. Take that into consideration. Now, me personally, I actually don't understand why people watch porn when they're horny. When I'm hungry, I don't watch people eat. I'm not like, that looks delicious, I'm just gonna, I know this is a little weird. I'm just gonna do that for 45 minutes until I get tired and hungry or need a nap. And like the idea of porn, okay? It's not that like this guy can have sex with this beautiful woman he hardly knows. The fantasy, the allure of porn 
is that this guy can have sex with this beautiful woman and then not have to remember her food allergies. Which one of her co-workers she doesn't like that week. Which one of her family members she currently gets along with and now does not. You can just have sex. It's incredible. Anyway. But you have to be really careful because a lot of times you want to bring like the intensity of what you see in TV and movies into the bedroom. But like communication is really, really important. Are you guys still tuning in? Like, I feel like a third grade substitute teacher. It's like, I'll start when you stop. Okay. You have to be careful what you say in the bedroom. Communication is important. Yes, yes, yes. People fuck here? Uh, awesome. I've resorted to vulgarity. <sighs> so I'm laying in bed with my lady, and she whispers to me. Like, why are you whispering? There's no one else in the room. Speak up. It's not a library. Come on. We're laying in bed, and she says to me, I want you to make me feel violated. She says to me, I want you to make me feel violated. So I did what I thought any man would do, given that opportunity. I tied her hands to the headboard, I tie her feet to the footboard, I put a gag in her mouth, and then I looked at her cell phone. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have been Christopher Anthony. You have been extremely attentive. Thank you <laughs> for spending your Friday here. I've always wanted to know what it's like to do comedy at a rooftop library. Thank you all. <laughs> thank Seriously, you guys, thank you so much. Have a wonderful night. Christopher Anthony, give him a big round of applause. He's right, you know, y'all were, like, I could tell that you guys were enjoying the show, but it's like you guys were afraid to laugh. Like, I